this video is about math, just a little bit. Um, basically, this is to allow you to design your own patterns uh, on your wheel, on your lace wheel. You need to know how many ends are available. So by end, I mean a single strand of yarn running from the, or thread, running from the center of your wheel out to the edge. And just grab an example. So for example, this pair of threads here is two ends. And this is two more ends and two more ends all the way around. So a single end is just one thread running from the outside edge to the center of your wheel. In order to decide how you want to divide or join these threads to make patterns, you need to know how many ends you have and how they can be divided. Can they be divided in twos, threes, fours, sixes, eights, and so on. So the easiest way to do that, I find, is to find the factors of the number of holes or pins in your loom. So let's just start at the small end. Let's imagine that you have a loom with only 12 pins or 12 holes. So you will have 24 ends, twice 12. And 12 can be divided a variety of ways, which you, uh, I'm sure, can quickly do in your head. 12 can be divided in two, so for six ends, or uh, rather uh, six pairs of ends, 12 can be divided by three, which is four, and then it flips over, and then 12 can be divided by four, which is three, by six, which is two, and by 12, which is one. So you see that halfway through here, these ones reverse. So I had one times 12, and here I have 12 times one. 2 times 6, and here I have 6 times 2. 3 times 4, and here I have 4 times 3. So, as I worked these out, I gradually stopped writing down these factors because they're just the reverse of the factors that I already had. So if we move to 18, 18 can be divided by 1, by itself, in other words, by 9, by 6, by three, by two, and by one. So, um, 18 is pretty good. It has quite a few choices. Uh, generally, I find things that can be divided by 12 are good numbers because 12 can be divided by two, three, and four. And that gives you lots of choices. So then we move up to 24, and I find that 24 holes or pins can give me two twelves, three eights, or four sixes. So uh, we have 12, 18, and 24. So then I'll move up so that you can see 36 and 40. 36, a multiple of 12, is a useful number with, you can use 2 by 18, 3 by 12, 4 by 9, or 6 by 6, and the reverses. 40, which is what your pinwheel is, has uh, 1 times 40, of course. 2 times 20, 4 times 10, and 5 by 8. So, of course, the reverse would be 8 times 5, 10 times 4, and 20 times 2. Forty-two is not a very useful number of pins. If you're making your own loom, I would avoid putting just 42 pins on it. I would either drop down to 36 or I would go up to 48 if at all possible because you just have more choices of the ways to divide your threads into patterns. But 42 you can see, and I do have a couple of looms that are 42s. 2 times 21 is a bit weird because generally these looms you work in pairs of threads and so if you have 6 times 7 or 2 times 21, if we did 6 by 7, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we'd have to start working with halves of pairs. And it gets harder to count and to remember where you are in the pattern. It's not that you can't do it, but it gets awkward. So I would avoid 
42. 44 is limited in ways it can be developed, especially because there are no small factors here. 44 can't be divided by 3, by 4, well, sorry, 4, yes, but not 5. So the small ones are kind of missing. I don't know what that was. Um, 48, which is a multiple of 12, is a good one. 64, not bad. 72, excellent. So 36, 72, 96, 108, pretty much things that are based around 12s are good numbers to warp your loom with if you're looking to have lots of variety for how to divide your threads to make patterns. So I know that's rather dry, but I thought it would be worth going over if you want to be um, free of patterns that you find on paper and develop your own.